Hey there, you're listening to You Still Going On About That with Rob Israel and Joseph K. You can find us anywhere you could download podcasts. You could also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at YSGOAT. Thanks for listening. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about that? All right, Joseph, we're recording this right now. Uh, it's Tuesday, November 24th. Yep. Uh, we're recording this on 1039 on the dot this moment. It's uh, We're in Texas time, so I guess it's central time. Yep. Uh, our plan is we'll probably get this out, depending on how long this goes, but this will be out super early in the morning or super late at night, depending on how you <laughs> do things. Sure. Like I never considered one in the morning, early in the morning, you know? No, no. Like one, I think anything after 4 a.m. I would consider more. Like if I'm like, oh, I got to wake up ridiculously early, 4.35 a.m. I consider yeah. that morning. But like I would, if I have to wake up at 3 a.m., I'm like, I have to go out in the middle of the night. Yeah. If I, if I have to wake up at 3 a.m., I'm not waking up. I'm staying up. Right, like yeah. three a.m. I probably and I consider that still nighttime. Yeah, yeah. I would say I, like arising from consciousness is the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That could be any time. <laughs> like, so if you wake up at four in the afternoon, good morning. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So, we're, what are we talking about, Joseph? Well, a lot has happened. However, uh, there's earth-shattering news in the realm of the super wealthy. We'll talk about that first. Oh, yeah. I'll just knock this out. I mean, it's like so stupid. Uh, so Elon, it was announced, I saw, and I don't really know how they really gauge these things and, like, who really is the richest person. I guess the richest person is, is, he, is it Jeff Bezos? Uh, the, the richest person is the man who has love in his heart, is from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is Jeff Bezos. Family. I think it is... <laughs> One who has friends and family yes. you can't beat that. <laughs> We're all the richest man on Thanksgiving. We're, uh, <laughs> no, I um yeah I I was not entirely sure. I think Bezos is the the, the richest man. Um, yeah, I'd have to consult my my latest issue of Monocle Monthly or uh, <laughs> to get the updated list. Gout, Gout Weekly. Yes. Yeah. The rich man's disease. Gout <laughs> I mean, rich as in like the 12th century rich. Like, think you could get it now from having a poor diet. Right, right. What was that magazine that came? I don't, we kids used to read it in high school. It was like, uh, basically, it was just like Lamborghinis. It was like pictures of Lamborghinis. Do you do you remember that? Like a car magazine. Yeah, it was like a car magazine, but it was that like a on top of the cars. No, the no, this was like a fancy one. There, there was no chicks in like confederate flag uh, bikinis or anything cocaine, uh, anything like that yeah oh, there's no board. nary a dodge to be seen um yeah. oh, i don't know i never i guess i was not a fancy lad like you yeah, oh afford, yes we couldn't afford such premium magazines all mm. i could get was uh the the you go monthly we used to with a magazine <laughs> dedicated to the the you go. The you go. <laughs> no, and, we. Uh, that's all we could afford in the Israel house. <laughs> Probably not some fancy lad like Joseph K who had the Lambo Weekly. Well, yes, we we used to sneak into grandfather's humidor and. <laughs> all I could afford was the Gremlin, the Gremlin. biannual release. <laughs> Ford Gremlin, or whatever that was called. Pinto pinups. Pinto. Pinto the. The Pinto pinups was sweet. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, no. Uh, right. the, <laughs> the, the, the number... you, well, before I even get to Elon Musk, I start like you know. I always love like mockery of the Gadsden flag. Yes, like, yeah. All the MAGA chuds, pre MAGA chuds, uh, like Tea Party era. Like the Gadsden flag is like an old time flag, but the uh, Tea Party around that time, they were starting to co opt the Gadsden flag a lot, and I'm sure a lot of right wing people and mil- militias and stuff would use a Gadsden flag, uh, but the, the Tea Party would use it, and it was used in the most, like, missing the point in every way about that flag. Yes. Uh, and 
you know, like don't tread on me and everything. And it, it's like really funny. Um, again, I don't think they really understand it, but I always like different parodies. I did a parody. I did one where it said like white privilege and it was like a Trump snake. Yep. That was a great one. The one I told you Michael Moore stole and credit me. Oh yeah. That was the one. Yeah. Moore, one of these days. Mm. One Straight of these to the days, moon. <laughs> I'm going to take one of your movies and put it on my Instagram and not credit you. I'm going to be like, yeah. look, look what I found. It's called uh, my uh, Mike and me, Roger and me. Sorry, Mike and me is a, a documentary we're gonna make about Mac and me. Mac and me, yeah. What about the rip off of ET? No, curling me. curling for movie. Columbine. That would be a yeah. good one. Curling for Columbine. Hey, God, it's an original thing. Yeah, Fahrenheit one one one. Uh, one day I'll own this boot and it's a snake getting stepped on by a boot. Yeah. And on the bottom of the flag says one day I'll own this boot. And I thought that was really funny. Oh yeah. Because it's making fun of the fact that like, right. Like, that's Rush Limbaugh convinces people like, you know, if you get, if you tax the rich, when you get rich one day, he, 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 I don't know why he laughs, laughs when he says that after like, <laughs> you'll get taxed too. Yeah. So, so they convince is like working more, you know, people who aren't rich to accept the fact that they maybe one day they could be rich. Yeah. So and then one maybe day they'll... I own this boot is pretty funny. That is I funny. like the one with the, the boot and the snake licking it, like the licking the, snake yeah. licking the boot because it's a bootlicker. Uh, so speaking of bootleggers and uh, people who are, uh, think they're going to own the boot one day um yeah. elon musk is the second richest man in the world supposedly today That's which crazy. i thought like came out of nowhere i was like what what did he do um well, how he, really, like how well, did he make all his money i mean i know he has tesla I'm sure um, he's SpaceX. Yeah, but like that's not a money making endeavor, is it? I mean, they obviously have a way of making money off of that, especially mm-hmm. if they're doing shit with NASA and they're probably taking tons of money. I don't know. He probably has like tons of investments and things you don't even know about. I mean, True. isn't he like co owner of PayPal? Um, or was one of that, the so he probably makes money from PayPal. I thought that was someone else, but um, it's Peter Thiel, but no, Elon Musk is a let's see. I'm looking up. Yeah, I'm looking up now. He has a hundred. They value him at. I'm not even. This is insane. A hundred and four billion dollars. He was CEO of the company until he was ousted in October 2002. Okay, but he probably still makes like a shit ton of money from it. A hundred and four billion dollars. Wow. That's like unimaginable. And what's um, funny about him? Again, we talk about this. Everyone makes a big deal about him. And like, you get like guys like Joe Rogan, like he's trying to save the world. And it's like, is he? Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I mean, no. And I said, I've said this before on this podcast. No, he's somebody who like took advantage of the, made uh, electric cars into a luxury vehicle. It should not. It should be a thing that right. everyone. If he really gave a fuck about the environment, he would be making sure that you can sell an electric car for five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's where you put your money. Yeah, you make them super affordable. You make you it know. that it forces the infrastructure to change where they have to put up more electric stations, yep. voltage stations, gas stations have to start putting that. More retail stocks have to put in there. There are some retail spots by us. I have it like, I think that McDonald's has a charging station by us. Yeah. Uh, Whole Foods always has them in yep. the parking lot. But like, if he really f- truly gave a shit about the environment, he would make it that maybe 5000 is a little ridiculous. Like, Make it a twelve, fifteen thousand dollar model that yeah. anyone can, that an average person can get, and he doesn't have all the bells and whistles. No, but you, you basically reduce the amount of gas guzzling cars on. But he doesn't. It's all fucking, you know, rich guy douchebag cars. Yeah. Uh, the biggest jerk offs in our area are the ones that have the Teslas. Uh, I'm not saying I wish I had one. Honestly, I don't know. I wouldn't buy one because I don't like Elon Musk. I think he's a douchebag. I don't yeah. want to put money to him. I'd rather – there's other electric cars out there. I don't oh, yeah. Them. There's some real nice ones. Yeah, um, so fuck him. I don't – I think he's just a, 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 a kind of a douche. He's a douche on Twitter. You would think, like, uh, if he's the second richest guy in the world, he's, he's number two for a reason. Because right. Because he's a piece of shit. The guy <laughs> tweets all these horrible – things all the time i don't have all those freaking tweets memorized because i'm not insane but 
he had, he's like this a, he's just a douchebag on Twitter. My favorite one he did recently where he said, "We will coup whoever we want to." When he's yeah. referring to Bolivia and lithium, well, guess what? He's gonna have fun in Bolivia because they just got rid of the fascists that they tried shoving in there, and they actually voted back in like a, a socialist leader a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I'm sure you know. Elon will do fine either way. And he has sure. Matter, but like, oh no, <laughs> like he's still gonna be a rich asshole. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but he's just like, there, and then there's all these people who like fawn over him, like unlike any other billionaire. Like they fawn over him. They think he's like this. Yeah. He says dumb shit on on Twitter, so they think like he's their friend or something. Well, he's a moron too. And then I, I, it's like it's not like he came out of nowhere. He's like a super rich kid. Right, I own like slave mines, so it's not like, oh, uh, one day I'll become Elon Musk. No, he won't. That's the thing is that like I don't know that he uh, maybe he is like a, a super smart inventor type of guy or whatever, but it seems like he came from money and he leveraged that money to make more money, and then he's he falls into that trap that a lot of super wealthy or super successful people fall into is that they think. That just because they're good at one thing means that they're super smart at everything on the planet, you know? And this year has proven him to be the biggest prick in how he reacted to COVID-19. Oh, yeah. He, he pushes COVID-19 disinformation since COVID-19 was a threat in the United States. He said it'll go away in April. He said yep. it's not a good fucking deal. He basically repeated all the same shit Trump did. Yeah. He went on Rogan. I what I what I was only able to stunk an interview for like an hour and a half. I'm not gonna sit there three hours and watch two douchebags downplay a virus that killed at that point almost hundred thousand people by then. I was like, he he still to this day pushes misinformation on COVID-19. He yeah. said he was trying to downplay tests that he got done. Yep. Missing the point that the tests he was taking. It's a known fact those tests are not accurate. Well, he, he just did, didn't. I mean, any he could have just Googled that shit before he starts spouting off. But on he's Twitter, not going to because you know? he's a prick. Yeah. He's pushing. And then what he does to his workers is terrible. What he did in the factories uh, during COVID when and he threatened to move to Texas. Yeah. God, move to Texas. Yeah. Like, he, of course you want to stay in California. Bullshit. This motherfucker doesn't want to. It, He'll open up a factory in Texas at some point. But I'm just so sick of everyone that like phones over. Like it's so funny. The kind of, I'm not saying everyone does this, but definitely like you know how like MAGA chud people, like it's always about George Soros and now it's Bill Gates, right? Yeah. Yeah. They always pick those two. I don't think George Soros is even worth a tenth of what fucking Elon Musk is worth anyway. Yeah, I doubt it. And I mean, uh, fuck, if you're worth over 100, well, how much? 100 and what? It was like $110 billion. Yeah, I mean, if you had two, remember when you were younger and you heard someone was a billionaire, it would be like, yeah, they had $2 billion and that was like rich as fuck. And you were just like, wow, this guy has $110 billion. I mean, that's well, insane. No one should have that money. This is no weird. No one should have that money. This is not communism. This isn't like so like evil. So I'm saying like they're, it does not warrant that. No one warrants that well. Like, if you are worth $110 billion, that means the system is so fucked up or the money is completely valueless. You know what I mean? Well, like, that's what I was going to say. Is I'm, I'm looking at this article uh, from <laughs> at this website. Oh, no. It's called – it's from Bloomberg.com, but it's Bloomberg Wealth. And he started this year with a mere $7.2 billion. And then he added a hundred billion to his wealth in just this year alone. And it's simply because the stock price of Tesla went out of control. It went up 547%. So this motherfucker made $100 billion this year. Now, that's the, the average person. I, I These numbers are like so weird to me. Okay, so 1 billion, uh, there's a uh, thousand, and then that's like a billion. What about, how, how does a billion even look? All right, so there's three zeros and then three zeros and three. All right, so there's a billion. And if this guy was me at work and he worked 2,000 hours a year, he would have been making uh, $500,000 a day. Does that make sense? No, $500,000 an hour. That's right. how much money he accumulated this year is about $500,000 per work hour. 
I mean, like, yeah. fuck, imagine if you made 500000 a year. You'd feel like you were like, I'm good. Oh, yeah. I'm living the good life. Right. You're making 500000 dollars a year. You're well, doing just... well. Because you, like, one, you could take that money. You could invest it, buy art, buy things, invest, turn that wealth into more. I mean, you could be worth millions in a couple of years just from doing that alone. You could go on vacations anytime you want. You could probably own multiple properties. Therefore, putting your money in, into yep. a place like that's a lot of fucking money. Five hundred. Oh yeah. First and thing I would like, do. The idea that this guy's making five hundred thousand an hour is that shit insane. It's crazy. I wouldn't even know what to do with that kind. Of, I mean, the first thing I would do, obviously, is get revenge on all my enemies. Uh, and then after that, I'd buy a, a big vault and convert some of that wealth into gold coins. So I could take Scrooge McDuck style money bags. I, I just want to let you know that's not how it works. You would, <laughs> you would die. You, you, I think Family Guy did an episode where they showed oh, you really? the scientific accuracy of what would happen if you jumped into a vault full of uh, of gold, gold coins. Doubloons. Yeah, you wouldn't. It wouldn't open up like the water. The coins condensed together would form just like form a cement. As a very solid floor like a very hard floor huh and it would hurt a lot well, I, this I, is, i'm sorry i'm ruining your fantasy this is very disappointing this it's is not my fault you could you could blame uh seth mcfarland and family yeah Guy. i'm just doing some mental uh calculating in my head that that does seem to be logical that that would be so i posted it on my instagram just now before we started yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah so I, I had a drawing I did of him as a dick. Right, yes. And they call him Space Karen and everything <laughs> because he basically is like a Karen. He basically repeats the same things that Karen say about coronavirus. I'm yes. sorry, don't think, on top of you already being a prick about a lot of things, like when he called the guy a pedo who saved the kids in Thailand. Yeah, that the was crazy. Said that uh, Elon Musk, stupid little toy boat that he wanted to use would not do anything and it would probably kill the kids yeah (laughs) and it was like and he tried to you know he's just always trying to make himself look better um and then he came out in fully support of trump i mean not like fully but pretty much like to the point where he was like communicating with ivanka trump through twitter and it was like and he oh he said he took the red pill and all that shit and it's like it's so i'm just i can't stand the people that fawn over him it's like Dude, he's just a fucking billionaire. Like, he's not saving the world. If he was saving the world, he would have took his money and he would have invested in an actual real infrastructure and yeah. he would make those cars affordable for everyone and not douchebags that vote for politicians that made sure electric cars couldn't be a thing. Or he would do, like, I, I, I don't like nor do I dislike Bill Gates, but Bill and Melinda Gates seem to like, they put their money to good use. They, they gave up a lot of their wealth. They, you always hear about that Bill and Melinda Gates foundation, like drilling wells in sub-Sahara Africa. I mean, they're, they're doing like legitimate good work everywhere. And that, that seems to be like kind of a noble exercise. Um, Elon Musk just seems like a dick who got a lot of money. Right? I mean, that's kind of his story. I mean, yeah, I mean, like Dolly Parton's a good example of people who actually do something with their money. Like, oh, she yeah. supposedly invested a million dollars into coronavirus research. Yeah. Well, this motherfucker, now a million dollars, I mean, fuck under Elon money, Musk money, a million dollars doesn't sound like anything. I mean, fuck, I guess Elon Musk made that in two hours. Who cares? Right. Dolly yeah. Parton's super rich, but she's not, I mean, a million dollars is a lot of money. Uh, oh, yeah. And, Honestly, like that is a lot of money. I think people need to understand that. It's it's funny. It's like you got these people who don't realize, like people who make like forty thousand dollars a year or a hundred thousand dollars a year, or whatever, and they're fawning over these billionaires who are making like you like you will never <laughs> you will never make like if you work at a job and like a, a nice steady job, like a not like a how do I say this? Like a standard average means job of like what what is the average salary in this country? Like what's a, like fifty thousand now? That doesn't sound yeah, that doesn't sound off base. I don't know if that's it, but that sounds 
like a good like, guess. Unfortunately, ra- wages have not moved up. No. Because you got guys like Elon Musk. Um, and that's, say, uh, so 60,000, let's say you make that. And if you're lucky to even get that, because there's people who probably wish they could make that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then you move up to, in the hunt, you know, you make over 100. But that point company, unless you're like in uh, the executive branch or managers, they're looking at you like, how could I replace your ass with <clears throat> three younger kids? Yeah, or a robot. You si- I don't want to pay you six figures. I could get, I could get a machine to do your job at some point. Like yeah. that's what, that's how they're looking at people. So, and then let's say you work all those years and you accrue a certain amount of wealth. Like, I don't know. You come close to a million dollars with your retirement plans, or if you invest in anything. If you're mm-hmm. lucky, talking about the average person. I'm yeah. Talking about like. Uh, some entrepreneur or whatever. I mean, like, that's insane. Like, this guy, some working step person, will call it, where you work like 40, 50 years to make what Elon Musk makes in two hours. Yeah. Well, and you'll, I, I think that's the thing is that no one will ever work for that kind of money. That money isn't attached to labor, that no. money is attached to capital. You know, if you, right. have, if you have extra money that you can invest in something, then you can make that kind of money, but no one ever works for. Uh, you mean no if one, I don't if I mow all the lawns in my neighborhood? Yeah, no I'm one a billion dollars. No, because you run out of hours. You run out of hours in the I week. Yeah, right. Day. Exactly. Yeah, that, I'm just saying. Well, but like, that's time, it. Time is literal money. And yeah. So the only way you can make, you know, the the big money is to not work for it. But that's the joke of capitalism: is that the only way you can really get rich is to stop working. Well, basically, that's what what's his face did, and he got shit for it when he ran for president in 2012. Um, Mitt Romney, yeah, basically, he wasn't a politician at the time, and he didn't fucking work. He basically made all his money from dividends. Yeah, and then he got shit for that. He basically said, like, this guy, like, he literally just has to exist and he makes money because all this stuff was invested in all kinds of stocks and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and not to say, Hey, listen, if you can do that, great. But let's, let's stop pretending that this is like something that's easily accessible for everyone. Well, yeah. And, let's and let's the ass of people like Elon Musk. Like, again, I, I remember I got into a conversation with somebody, uh, I'm not going to name their name. I was on a podcast and he like made trying to make it like it was my fault that I didn't have an electric car. Or something like that. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't have eighty thousand dollars to blow on that fucking car. Like, yeah. Who does? Do you? I'm like, I mean, like, if you do, then good for you, asshole. But right. like, <laughs> I mean, like, no, that car should be accessible to everybody. I mean, yeah, I, I guess maybe that's a weird word to use because you could say like, yeah, well, you technically have access to it. You just need yeah. to for it. When I say accessible, I mean like realistically. Reasonably accessible, accessible yeah. And yeah, I'm sorry. There should be cars like like if you go to like a dealership and you get a car, you know, they have lower models, they have small cars. There should be like literally like the Kia version of a fucking Tesla. Yeah. If you truly gave a fuck about like the environment or cared about actually changing how consumers – drive and you know the impact and trying to basically make oil and gasoline go away now who knows he could be working on that it could be top secret i have no idea yeah it doesn't seem like that's happening anytime soon right especially with like him going out there and pushing like the the tank you remember that tank uh like last year oh yeah yeah that's there was, some, there was like the ugliest, dumbest thing I ever saw. No, no one's gonna. If anyone's driving that, they're an asshole. Like it was literally the stupidest thing I ever saw. I was like, "What the fuck is this thing?" And then like, I was watching a, a clip of Rogan. He had some like car guy on. It was talking about uh, how that car is complete bullshit. Because I guess a lot mm. of these cars, whenever you see like car shows or like whenever they show you concept cars, okay. He said a lot of these cars are like they're just it's almost like they're just cool models on top oh, yeah. of a like an existing car already. Right. Like, they just put like a shell on top of an old civic or something. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's what he was saying. He's like, he's just doing that. It's not an actual so it's a complete bullshit. Like it's not an act working really working model. <laughs> yeah. Did you see oh. like on yeah, an unrelated note? Did you see James Cameron, the guy that did Avatar? 
teamed up with Mercedes Benz and he they put out a prototype of a, an electric car and it's like super fucking weird. It doesn't have a steering wheel and it's like all spacey and stuff. Uh, it's just it was like kind of like a, a weird, but it's exactly what you're talking about. They'll never make this car. This car isn't it doesn't exist in any real sense. They just sort of like made a model and it's probably cobbled together with a bunch of pre-existing cars. Um it's like the shit you would see back in like the dentist office. Uh you remember Omni magazine? Oh yeah. I was a subscriber, yeah. Yeah, like uh, I used to remember looking at those magazines when I was a little kid in the dentist's office. Yeah. Uh, so before I get to that, but the point I was trying to say about it is I just find it really funny how a lot of these guys, like, they go after, like, George Soros and Bill Gates all the time, thinking that these people are, like, the destructors of the planet. They're the, and But then you get, like, a billionaire, like Elon Musk, and they're just, like, all of a sudden very quiet. And it's, like, yeah. <laughs> doesn't make any – it's, like, no, all billionaires are bad. Like, it's not, like – I mean, like you said, yes, some of them, like Bill Gates funding. Yeah, that's great. But at the same time, he also could be, uh, like I was recently on uh, a couple, like a month ago, I did a mm -hmm. podcast revolution. And we actually talked about that a little bit. Uh, this guy runs it, Jason. And he said that it's actually kind of fucked up what Bill Gates does in a way because he can actually, and I'm probably screwing up uh -huh. his uh, words. You can listen to the, uh, the podcast I did, uh, Revolution, I was a guest on that. And we talked about how, like, Bill Gates comes out and is like, I want to throw in, like, $10 billion of my money into this thing. But, like, it totally messes up, like, how the government does things with like, their own, uh, like, now they have to, like, stop what they're doing because some billionaire is, like, yeah. and, he, and the billionaire doesn't really understand, like, disease control 100% and kind of fucks up everything a little bit. I know that that is a real thing. I don't, like I said, I don't know much about Bill Gates. I, I don't have like any feelings pro or con, but I know that when I worked in, in Florida, sometimes I would work in government contracting stuff. And often like it was kind of fucked up. Like the government would say, okay, we're putting $10 million aside to remediate this part of the Everglades. And then a rich person would be like, I want to adopt the Everglades. And so the government would be like, okay, well, we're taking our 10 million back now Jimmy Buffett can do it. And then Jimmy Buffett does it, but he puts all these weird conditions Jimmy on Buffett? it. I, I just threw him out because he's from- But Florida, isn't that the name of a singer? Yeah, he's the the Key West singer. He's just but isn't singer. Buffett also a, a different guy who's a billionaire? Yeah, that's Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, Buffett or something? Yeah. I just threw out Jimmy Buffett because I was talking about Florida. It, it oh, doesn't okay. matter. It's just... Oh, okay. I'm like confused now. No, but like a celebrity will say like, well, I'm doing it. So the government takes their money back. The Everglades gets no more money than they ever would have gotten to begin with. And now they have like some weird celebrity putting the money in and kind of come up, coming up with weird conditions and stuff like that. So that type of altruism can be harmful. Uh, but Right, because it ends up just being a thing that prompts them up. Yeah. And it's, and like I said before, rich people aren't always the best at everything. You know, maybe if you made all your money in developing PayPal or whatever, maybe that's what you're really good at and stay the fuck out of cave rescues. Or maybe you, know? you uh, just wisely invested in it or locked yeah. into it. Like you didn't even know anything about it and you were basically given that. Like right. somebody, like you should do this and they guided you to that. And yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I did post it on my uh, Instagram. I had it on my Twitter, but my if I post it on my Instagram, I get more interaction just because I have more followers on there, and I get more yeah, uh, yeah. weird comments from people. So <laughs> I posted it. So basically, I did this drawing of him as a dick, uncircumcised penis. I assume that he's uncircumcised. I don't know. I just yeah, assume sure. because of like what location he was like born in in the world. Um, so and it's also funny. Because it looks like a helmet. It's hilarious. I mean, it's kind of gross. Uh, no offense to anyone whose dick hasn't been sick. <laughs> you, you, I don't know. I'm not going to get to it. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> but uh, I just wrote, congrats to Maggot Chud Elon Musk for becoming the second richest person in the world. Love how the people that attack Soros and Bill Gates all the time also laud, laud over Space Karen Elon Musk. Yeah, Space that's... Karen Elon Musk blasting off. So I did one of him in space and the animation didn't work, but I redid it where his uh, dickhead Elon is flying up and the clouds are behind him to create the illusion of yeah. a blast off. It's, it was a complex animation that I did in uh, 
in Flash. Uh, took me uh, less time, <laughs> more time than it took Elon to make a million dollars, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say, like, how you didn't it farm like it out to minutes. South Korea. You didn't farm it yeah. Did it on my, my laptop. So then I got all these weird comments. Maybe if Soros did an episode. Oh, this one's good. Maybe if Soros did an episode of Joe Rogan, he'd be he'd be cool. <laughs> and I said, hundred percent true. Well, well, well. <laughs> this one guy goes, "Fuck Soros and anyone who lumps those three together because of their wealth." I wrote, "What's your problem with Soros?" <laughs> I don't know why I even asked. I got beautiful lap people laughing. Soros Gates and Musk all have a special place in hell. Okay, whatever. Uh, is there anyone that's rich or in politics that you do like? Just curious. <laughs> Should write. I like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then uh, I don't know. And that was it. I mean, I get. I had blocked many people on my Instagram just because I had to. It's just funny. Again, it's weird. Like, there's certain people that you can't make fun of or comment on without getting like oh yeah people trigger. Yep. Um, Joe Rogan. Joe also. Rogan is definitely one of them, without a doubt. That is, you will get people who will make it sound like he's a saint. Um, I don't, I don't get it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elon Musk is another. Yep. Uh, Kanye, a little bit. Yeah, a little Kids bit. Kids love the PewDiePie. Oh one. my god, PewDiePie is definitely if you call him a Nazi or an anti-Semite, they'll, oh yeah, they'll come back and say he isn't, but then they'll say something anti-Semitic and then they'll say Heil like, Hitler, you know. Well, so it's well, like... nothing, nothing as gratuitous as that, but enough to basically prove that either A, they're disingenuous or they're just stupid. Right. Probably both. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of other people. There's definitely oh, like Tulsi Gabbard was like another one. Yeah, I was kind of lumped into that chud circle. Yep. Um, and again, these are like people who are like, they've been able to convince people that they're, they don't swing a completely certain way to the left or the right. Right. But they're mostly all right wingers. But way. they're all right wingers. But you're right. They, they, I don't know. It's, I, I saw a cartoon or a, a, a drawing on Twitter the other day where it was like the, the, it was a four panel thing and on the top it was like a guy saying you're a left winger and the left winger was like thumbs up like yeah totally i am and then he's like you're a right winger and the right wing guy freaked out you know it's like people who are left wing are usually pretty comfortable with being called left wing or you know being called progressive or whatever but you call right wingers like right wing or something like that they they generally tend to lose their shit and they swear up and down they'll try to claim that they're independent yeah, I know. Yeah. I've met many of these people who claim they're independent, and then they always vote right wing, right? Or they yeah. re- and they repeat the same right wing talking points. Because, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of them don't want to admit to the fact that they're Republican. Yeah, they know that, and it, it's not like, um, it, it's culturally bad to be Republican. It's just that the, the Republican Party usually has like horrible policies social right. policies like yeah. i and before we get into the full story of the episode i tweeted this thing today because i really was i'm getting you know i get tired of like people who claim to be like on the left on twitter who like like listen i'm not i don't expect people to kiss biden's ass i'm not gonna do that sure. i expect the most out of him but at the end of the day i know he's gonna be a fucking improvement over trump now is that enough? No, but it's a start. And we I'll need take it for now. You need, yeah. you need to be able to start before you go anywhere. Right. You know, Obama was interviewed about, uh, I mean, I was watching like Jimmy Kimmel uh, had Obama on. I was watching it. And that's when I tweeted the thing. I'm like, does Adam Carolla have like a hate wall oh, yeah. at home where he just has pictures of like Adam Carolla? <laughs> I mean, I, I have uh, Jimmy, uh, Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel and he's just, fucking i don't know beats off to it or something <laughs> <laughs> like with on a trampoline You're right yes, yes. Girls on trampolines if you watch the man show you know? oh yeah i remember that yep so and i said he was interviewing Biden broke a good, i mean obama broke a good point about the aca and this is another thing you know people complain about the aca but the whole idea was he said the idea he's like we knew once we got it we had to get in first yeah, he says it wasn't perfect. He says this in the thing. The whole idea is you get somebody to come in, like take the football, yep. and run with it. 
and yeah. improve on it. That's why I wanted Hillary to be president because I knew she would improve on it. Right. Or to attempt to in some way. She just would. I mean, people will deny and say she won't do enough. Of course. But then you lead to another one and they move on to it. And then it gets better and better. But yeah. You get, instead, what happens is you get Trump in there and he, him and the Republicans try to fuck with it for four years. And they did do damage to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, uh, it's like now they have to start over. And people don't realize that. I mean, I'm glad, like Obama said, and Obama has said this multiple times during his presidency. He didn't claim it was perfect. He said, it's a start. People, I don't know if people realize, not that social security is this amazing thing, but it is a thing that prevents people from completely dying. Oh yeah. There's uh, plenty of people that a, rely on that greatly, like very, very greatly. Right. It's and, the thing between them and homelessness, you know? Right, being completely homeless. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and again, but when it started, it wasn't as good as it is now. Right. It takes years and it takes, pe- and not having presidents and voting in people that main ideology is to destroy the thing that was put in place. Yeah. People don't realize that. And I, and I said, I, I knew that ACA wasn't perfect from the start. I, would I want Medicare for all? Yeah, I would love that. I would still like that. But Abs- yeah, you know, absolutely. this is what we have. So I don't know. So this one guy tweeted this stupid thing about like how liberalism brought us Donald Trump or something. And I, I was like, well, uh, I was like, that's such a, like the policies that, the, that have been pushed forth is what created Donald Trump. And I was like, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. Not, no. I mean, you can say like uh, the system that we have has created, I don't know. And then you could say that about any president. Right. You could say that about anything. Yeah, I mean, it's such a loop. No, I said, so I tweeted this thing. I said, Donald Trump isn't the product of liberal democracy. He is a reality show star slash character mm-hmm. that is able to prey on poorly educated people who rely on right-wing media for their news and information. Also, he never won the majority of votes in the country. So yeah. again, all these people talk about what an expert Bannon was or like all this stuff or trying to like push Trump as if he was this thing that people wanted. No, he fucking lost like three and a half million votes. Yeah. So then I wrote the Republicans were desperate knowing how difficult it would be to win a national election after Obama and with their outdated, horrible social policies. Not talking about economics. I'm talking about so just upfront social mm-hmm. policies, how people live their lives and everything. Econo- Once you get economics involved, you lose half the room because... Right, but just the general that. yeah, and nuts and bolts that, of American life. And anyone who claims that nor- average people like, they're not going to think that way. They think about like, mm. uh, you know, Trump putting like a Muslim ban. You get people like, what the fuck? You know, that's, a, that's, that's how you get you get some people like that. But when you start bringing up like actual numbers <laughs> some kind of form of math you just like lost half the room it's just the way politics work yeah um and that's how republicans are able to stay in power because they usually push bullshit memes right well that and gerrymandering but yeah yeah well yeah gerrymandering is yeah that's dan crenshaw yeah. uh election and after okay so after trump was able to squeak in with a narrow electoral electoral college win so today they announced that basically Biden had over 80 million votes. Yeah. And Trump has 70, 74, like 73 and a yes. half. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's crazy. So Biden has like 51 something, like 51.5. And yep. Trump has like 47 point something. And I'm like, if you see that, you're like, that's great. But then if you realize with that stupid electoral college, Right. If 250,000 votes changed hands to Trump right now, Trump would be president with, and he would still have lost by 6 yeah. million votes in the popular. That's why I said that. I'm like, he could totally win the presidency and lose the, he could, he could lose yep. double in the, in the, uh, in the popular vote and still win the presidency. Yeah. The way the electoral college is set up favors the Republicans. You know, it just does. Yeah. It's a, uh, what they call it? uh, What's the one thing Republicans always get after? They don't like minorities having at work at work and all that. Uh, It's like unionizing or the, 
it's like affirmative action. They oh yeah, right. Like but yeah, it is. College is affirmative action for Republicans. It's the only yeah. way they can win on a national. Uh, you know, uh, at the federal level, yeah. It's, yeah, on the federal level. It is really remarkable because you're right. It could have very easily gone for Trump. Like, you know, it, it, you could just see it happening that way. It wouldn't have taken a ton of weirdness for it to happen that way. So uh, all the states did certify. Pennsylvania certified today. Nevada certified. Uh, Georgia. Mi Georgia, Michigan. So, so Biden is the official winner of the election. Now, we still have another hurdle to overcome. I think that first week in December, December. yep, they send the electors to the college to do some actual voting. And theoretically, you could have, I think you could still have like faithless electors. I know a lot of states passed laws against that after uh, Hillary Clinton lost, because there was brief talk of, of some states trying to elect Clinton over Trump. Yeah. You know, uh, but the Democrats never attempted that you know it was mostly online talk so we do still have a couple hurdles to overcome but it looks like Bi biden won you know and i'm not worried about it at this point i think it, it at this point like everyone thinks biden is the president and if at this point yeah the electors you will have fucking well first of all the biggest joke we'll get into this in a second but i'll, not, I'll get this out of the way so one of the biggest things that was really funny was during the debates uh, Trump kind of tried to claim like he was Mr. Wall Street and yeah. that everything and Wall Street's only the best. Oh, yeah. Thing. And he said that Biden wins Wall Street. Uh, the economy will crash like the uh, Wall Street will crash or right. something more than ever. And then literally the day that it was finally announced with the Biden transition, which yep. I think started what last it finally announced last night. Starting yes. today. Wall Street had a record, one of the biggest yeah. record highs today. It hit like 30,000 or so. It was just crazy. So also, the other thing of why I'm not worried about Trump being president anymore. Well, was that basically, what was it, like 1,500 companies basically said, yeah, you need to get the fuck out of here? Right. And it was an, a groundswell of pretty much everyone except current Republican politicians said it was time no but i mean like ceos of companies yeah the ceos that basically pay the republicans to run right uh now the they, one holdout was the my pillow guy he yeah, said yeah he was too busy putting money to kyle rittenhouse yeah we'll get into that in a minute later write that yeah. one down i want to talk about that because yeah yeah i forgot about that that's yeah. super fucking disgusting um yeah so like yeah someone said like a, i don't know how accurate this was like when I tweeted about like uh, something else, I don't know. Uh, this guy said basically that Goldman Sachs and all them basically said, we'll never donate to the Republican Party again if you don't get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I hadn't heard that, but I did hear. How accurate that uh, story is. <laughs> well, it's basically, you know, people just want to move on. And you you saw like a brief moment where it was like, this could get, this could get pretty ugly, you know? And you had zero pushback from like Marco Rubio and John Cornyn and Ted Cruz and Mitch basically McConnell. any of the active right red definitely mostly red state Republicans yeah. refused to accept would not even acknowledge that Biden won. Mitt Romney said, yeah, I think was the only one like, we saw the guy again the guy who's the governor of Maryland. Yes. But again blue state right. Republicans it's very different. Uh, Pat Toomey. Oh, I guess is it running again? Actually. Oh, okay. I I, I could be wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. He's not. He supposedly isn't running again, but he's in Pennsylvania, which went to Biden, and I would imagine he he basically acknowledged Biden as the winner. Yep. He was probably like the only Republican senator to do that. Really. It was him um, and uh, Romney. Didn't uh, Collins say anything? Did she? I don't think I, Colin. I, what? Uh, I had to look in deeply into side to see yeah, if I. Awful. I cannot believe she is still gets to remain. I cannot. One of the I, best things I saw was that Diane Feinstein will not be leading. Yeah, the, I saw the, that. The Democratic judiciary anymore, which is a fucking win in a, in a huge way. Yeah. Um. Because what a colossal fuck up that was. Which yeah. Did. She was terrible. She was terrible. She's, um, she's always been trash. All right. So 
one of the things leading up before the transition was there was a shenanigans going on in Michigan where yep. these, where are these guys? They're supposed to just like be like, okay, yeah, we certify the state goes to, and, they, and it was like a, a split. It was like two Republicans, two Democrats. Yeah. Two Republicans were refusing to do it. It's almost like a, I don't want to say ceremonial, like strictly ceremonial, but yeah, it was like, uh, it was like a, a vestige from the old days where you had like two Republicans, two, two Democrats certify or accept the certified uh, results from the, the counties. Um, and Trump invited the two Republicans to the White House and they went. <laughs> yeah, offered them they uh, went. Don Perignon or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing illegal about that at all. Nothing. And so they came back and one of the Republicans said, no, nah, I'm still voting to certify. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'd be glad. Well, they to... voted. They refused to, and then they voted, and then they tried to rescind. And that's when Trump invited, and that one guy, I think, refused to. What was his name? Kringle? Kringle? Shrinkle or something. Well, there was two groups. There was that was the... his uh, nickname in uh, high school when he would come out of the pool. <laughs> right. Was there was there was two people in Wayne County that didn't want to certify. And then they oh yeah they wanted to throw out all right. the votes in Wayne County which yes. I don't know why why would they do that well they so they weird why yeah they, they, what's there what's in Wayne County they wanted to throw out the the black vote in Detroit and take the white vote in Livonia you know yeah um yeah, and they they but both it, parties are the uh, same Joseph they didn't certify them they certified them they tried to rescind their certification. And so then the other two were at the state level. Uh, those two Republicans shrink on someone else and, and shrink oh, abstained. <laughs> right. So it's just an embarrassment. I mean, it's it's really it's really an embarrassment. What's going on? Anyway, all of them certified. Trump, I think, is completely out of um, legal challenges. Uh, and he's dropped all legal challenges. And the last piece standing was Emily. W. Murphy, the administrator of the GSA, <clears throat> and she, basically a Trump partisan hack. Yes, she is a it looks like a wealthy donor who kind of got her job. She's not really qualified for it, but normally you can just skate through this because, like, the GSA is basically like, well, this is how it's done. Sign the paper. You know, it, it should just be an autopilot job. But Emily decided she's not. She she was not going to certify the issue. It wasn't going to give. Joe Biden and the Biden transitional team authority to operate like every other transition team did. And, yeah, like, and this is like something that should have started two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, it's disgusting. Like they said, like this woman's responsible, this woman's responsible for the potential deaths of hundreds of thousands of people when it comes to COVID and all that stuff, because there's information that the Biden team's not getting he can't yep. build his team around it. They're not sharing the information. Yeah. And all they're doing is preventing uh, things from getting done. So her finally doing that is like, gee whiz, thanks, you fucking chud. Like, well, she's terrible, you know. And she honestly, wrote this letter she put out. She wrote a letter. It's like a page and a half. And normally the letter just says like, hey, congratulations. You've been determined to be president-elect. You have this amount of money available. You have to do, undergo these, you know, reporting procedures. Here's our contact number if you have any questions. But Emily did this huge letter about how, like, she did everything right, and everyone's being mean to her, and people are threatening her and her family and her pets Aww. and this, that, and whatever. And it's like, just fucking sign the goddamn papers, Emily. Well, you know, all, Trump is pipe the one that down. Trump is the one that yeah. did that to her. Like, right. Trump's he, the one that basically. Put somebody in a position that should yes. never be in that position of power. Well, and if I did. There's anyone to blame? It's Trump. So Congress called her in. She didn't come. Katie Porter was like, "Emily, you, you come, or we're coming after you." And then, like an hour later, she signed the papers, which of yeah. course anyone would. If if Katie if Katie Porter were to like tell me like, "Hey, Joseph, I'm coming coming at you with my whiteboard." And I'm gonna whiteboard you upside the head. You're goddamn right. I would do whatever Katie Porter wanted me to do. I mean, that sounds uh, like some weird, uh, some other weird shit. You're she's doing. she's relentless. She's fearless. Uh, but then I did hear Mark Meadows, the uh, one of Trump's chief chudlings, um, 
put out a he put out a memo saying that no one should cooperate with the Biden transition team without direct approval. So they're they're just a fucking clown show. So Emily did sign the papers. Do you remember like when George W. Bush won or I guess stole it? You know, the Supreme Court. They made all these claims that the Clinton administration right. They took the W's, W's, and the keyboard and all this shit. And they try to make them out to be they they exaggerated and made it out to be it was like completely classless and all yeah. that stuff. And it was in the end of the day, it was completely horseshit. Right. Well, but, Republicans love being victims. But supposedly, I don't know how I guess when George W. Bush, well, he was done anyway, he got two terms. Right. Um, but when it was time for Obama to come, I don't think they gave them much of a problem, even though they did something really nasty where like they didn't let him stay at the White House or something gross. Oh, really? Like the day or like the day before the um the uh inauguration or something. Oh jeez. They're supposed to be like invited or allowed to like stay or I don't know, something. Look this up. I, I'm like they, they made up this bullshit excuse, it was complete horseshit. Yeah. Like a spiteful thing. Um, but, you know, I don't think people realize what a big deal this is that Trump lost after one term because, <laughs> you know, we haven't had this in like. No, it's Bush, since Bush. Bush 30 senior. years. Yeah, Bush Sr. Like, had one term. Like, what's her face? Uh, Elizabeth Warren tweeted that. She said that it's been more than a generation that we never had a yeah. one term president. And, you know, Joe Biden deserves a lot of credit for like we've been grown like we've been conditioned to thinking that every president since like bill clinton's go is going to be a two-term yeah person well, president no matter what and there were people who just who don't pay attention to politics and don't think they're like yeah the guy's just going to get reelected. that's how it works you just and, have such institutional advantages when you're the president you have free airtime you have nonstop commercial you can do things like you can, i'm releasing yeah, you can the use Air Force One for things that you shouldn't be using it for. George W. Bush did that. Yep. You can you can change prices. I mean, I, I remember like people, I think it was Clinton. So, so you can like release the petroleum reserves and bring the price of gas down by like 10 cents or something. I mean, you can, you can do a lot of shit when you're president. It's only because Trump was so lazy and so bad at being president that he didn't put that to good use. I mean, he Trump- could have been... He it, it, like t- five days before the election, he's like, "Oh, I'm lowering prescription drugs." You know, like, fucking, where were you a year ago? People might have cared. You know, yeah, what, like, he he could have delivered everyone a check again. He could have given yeah, them a well, stimulus they check. They said that if you want to blame somebody, actually, the guy who totally fucked over Trump was McConnell. Yeah, because Trump, if it was up to Trump, he probably would have gave everybody money in some way, some form. Maybe it would be like Trump bucks or something. Yeah, just send out. Shit. Bought but, a box but, of Trump steaks. But McConnell you know? was like, I'm not giving anybody anything. And I'm like, and I'm not defending Trump here. I'm just saying that, like, you know, Trump is the uh and I'm glad that he couldn't bribe people. Yeah. Uh that Trump is the product of his own demise. I mean, like right. he used the, the Republicans, Republicans used him. Um, but uh well, here's a fucked up thing. I so Trump unilaterally unilaterally exited the open skies treaty oh yeah i saw that they're decommissioning and destroying the only two observation planes so that the biden administration cannot resume surveillance flights over russia yeah weird huh right <laughs> yeah i know i know it's a russia gate thing and uh you know it's not a real thing but sure okay keep telling yourself that you're not you i mean people who say that bullshit like, well you yeah you you do you do see Trump trying to burn the house down on his way out. And he has a group of horrible people with him. He has that uh, 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 Pompeo, who's awful. And he has just just Betsy DeVos in the Department of Education. Like everyone he's put in charge of anything is a terrible person. And they've all been given orders to essentially like burn the place down and then take the cyanide pill. I mean, they're essentially like they've got they've got a bunker mentality. You know, they're they're not getting out of it alive. The one thing that Democrats have to do is link the fucking Republicans to Trump. To Trump well, they they've done they a pretty good job it. of it. Like, they've linked themselves to Trump. That you won't have to yeah, do but much it has work. To be communicated that way, yeah. so that like you know, 
with how classless Trump is being. And you still have people, a huge portion of people that believe that Trump didn't lose because yeah. they just watch Fox News all the time and they watch OAN and they watch Newsmax. They watch, they watch Bright, like Breitbart and yep. The Blaze and all that crap. There's so much right-wing media out there that they can escape to. And that's why I said that. I'm like, no, Trump didn't win because it made the democracy. No, he won because he was able, <laughs> they were able to use a reality TV show star to convince poorly educated people to make a poorly yeah. poor decision and a decision against their own interests that's, and that's, it, it didn't it couldn't it didn't work the second time but again it's scary because even though by one by seven million votes i guess yeah. right? so it's gonna yeah, be like about then he could have still lost the presidency if two hundred fifty thousand electoral votes well each hands I'll worry about that again in like three years when they, they ramp up the next presidential campaign. Right. Uh, for course. now, Biden won. Yeah, Biden won. won. I'm not worried about the elector thing. I think it was really fucked up, though, with the transition thing. I think at this point, you know, he's already announcing his uh, cabinet. Yep. Um, I'm hearing all different kinds of people getting, like they call it like the circular, circular firing squad. Like some yeah. people are excited about John Kerry being attached to um, – what was it? Climate. He's the climate. Yeah. Con- climate. Fine. I mean, like, he's, dude's this real smart. Gonna, this is someone who's going to take it seriously. Yeah. Like, is it the? Is he the best one? I don't know. But well, it's he's yeah. going to take it seriously. And it's like yeah. what you were saying before. Like, you could put a environmental zealot in charge of it, and he or she wouldn't get very far. You know, I mean, like John Kerry can advance the ball. He can. He can get us he'll, day one he'll get us back in the paris climate accord you know the paris accord uh he knows how to get stuff done he's not you know crazy he's, he's a known quantity john Kerry will leave the environment better than when he found it you know i'm, I'm confident to that and, i just like yeah i mean like he's gonna take it seriously like who was in that position for rick perry yeah, no, he was no, no. I don't think they had one. I don't think, uh, I think Trump got rid of that position. He's like, he we don't need this. Fill half the positions. Yeah. So I, all the people I'm seeing, like, they all look good. They look, they all look smart. They all look thoughtful. They look they like look, people are going to take it seriously. They look diverse. You know, I mean, that the, there's a good mix of, of different types of people. I always see these people there. like complain and say things like, oh, that's just like, uh, we call it like polish or something. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, like, this is, you know, and they bring up things like Clarence Thomas. But I'm like, no, Clarence Thomas is an actual horrible human being. Yeah. They're not putting Clarence Thomas in these positions. They're putting people that are, yes, are they minorities? Yes. And is it a big fucking deal that um, they have this position? It kind of is because they never had that position before. Right. And it's a, hey, listen, you know what? We didn't have a, we, we have the first female vice president ever now is it like that's crazy yeah (laughs) i mean kind of yes it will it's going to change how things are done oh yeah change how we view things how we view who has power and who doesn't it's going to change everything yeah and and, and it may it will be 100 percent positive no but that's a big fucking deal. It is. It's a big fucking deal. I mean, like, well, you I don't think at... people realize that. It, like, I know, yes, Sarah Palin could have been the first vice female vice president, or I guess what's her face, uh, uh, the one that uh, Montel, yeah, yeah. But, and then Sarah Palin could have had it. Yes, that would have been absolutely horrible because she's a horrible person. <laughs> well, you you saw Trump's cabinet, which was essentially Trump's cabinet, and the, his staff were essentially. Fox News hosts, crazed right wingers, Junior to be yeah. in charge of labor. A guy who basically told his employees if they voted for Obama, he would replace them all with yeah. fucking uh, computers. I mean, he put him. He put, he tried to get him in labor. Thankfully, that guy ended up dropping out because he had too much. Trump put like half country. his family in this cat. I mean, it was just an embarrassing. Yeah, yeah like know? Hunter Biden's not going to be. He's the, not going to be. Senior Biden's advisor. not going to come out on TV yeah. and go. Listen here, Jack. I'm going to send Hunter to the Middle East, and he's going to create <laughs> peace there. Right. Like, no, he's not going to do any of that. It's yeah. insane. I mean, the fact that 
fucking Jared Kushner had so much power is like ridiculous. The guy didn't even have proper credentials. No, he never did. You know, I mean, I I do hope. I know this wasn't on our list, but I, I, there's a lot of like going back and forth. Like, should should they prosecute Trump? Should they root yes, out? Yes, they the, should. Yeah. If it's not Biden, it should be at least New York. A hundred percent has to face something. Well, because I, you open the door for other people if you don't. I would say honestly, like you don't want you don't want a steady drumbeat of high level Trump people getting called in. But I I would argue that you need federal prosecutors to go after like if if um, Mark Meadows broke the law, you know, they should be investigating him. If they th- if they think these people broke the law, they should be investigating them. And from what I could gather, there's like a decent number of people that did really shit. Like Pompeo was like involved in like spying and selling things associated with his position. I mean, all these people should be fucking. He was doing things that his position was supposed to be doing at all. Yeah, he was making campaign appearances. Right. So his position is not supposed to be doing any of that. He he also, I guess, he has aspirations to run for president. He like. Yeah, Iowa or something. He's from Kansas, I think. But they should take like I. I would say a, let the states go after Trump. Let New York go after Trump. That's that's fine. But I would say I. I get where Biden's coming from. Like he doesn't want to appear as if this is all he's going to do is like prosecute Trump. But he should he should get a like a blue ribbon panel of like five old school Republicans and five old school Democrats and put them in a room and say look it over tell us what to do should we press should we pursue it or not and biden say look that's it that's the only thing i'm doing sending it over to these guys they're going to figure out what to do and if they make a referral to to doj so be it and if they don't so be it then just roll the dice let them see what they find yeah i'm sure they won't have a problem finding anything no they won't but like at least then biden could be like oh that's weird yeah no it was five republicans five democrats they found a shitload of evidence and i guess now we're gonna have to drop a supermax on trump's head but you know i mean like but the idea that like i mean think of like what a clown show trump's presidency was mm -hmm. i mean he had like his family involved in things that we should have no like have you ever seen anything like that just embarrassing that i love that clip i see it a lot lately of when when he took ivanka to like the g8 summit or something oh yeah and she tries talking to these people and yeah looking at her like who the fuck are you it's because she's clearly a moron she's clearly in way over her head she's clearly like i'll bet you it was her camera person trying to get like a cool photo op of oh her, yeah like, totally yep. interacting and like the, the the every all the adults in the room are like Dude, what? Why did you bring your kid here? Like, what is your, what is going on? You know, like, uh, it's it's, it's a it's been yeah, a rough daddy four daughter years. day at the G eight. Yeah, right. Or Take- seven. Yeah, I think it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, I don't think people understand that, and like, and I say this all the time to anyone that claims like Democrats suck or whatever. Like, when Democrats are run the presidency. We're not constantly playing defense of a bad ideas. We're now in the conversation. You can now like know that things will actually happen. Will they happen 100% the way we want to? No. Yeah. But like policies that progress, some kind of progressive policies, something can happen. They don't happen under Republicans, at least not modern day Republicans. I haven't seen anything. And especially with Trump, who was just like, again, a complete buffoonery like no like except for some shitty tax cut what did he do yeah he locked up some kids in cages and he completely fucked up the coronavirus yeah he he dismantled a lot now i guess if you're a partisan republican you can say he stacked the the judiciary you know he's yeah, which he is, you stacked can say the courts it's mcconnell yeah he well, credit for that right but trump trump won his race you and need the he, presidency to put appoint those people yeah. from the he, so he he delivered McConnell. on that it didn't take any skill all it took was like they gave him a list and said here yeah so this person's next this person's next this person okay whatever it is it's it's something um, I said, the irony of like when they announced joe biden's win uh as a projected winner 
and Trump was playing golf was just like just summed up the entire That's Trump it. Administration. Yeah. it was just like um well you know did we was there anything else on that no on that, that, on that part now, the things we have left that we want to talk about. Now, we did not originally have Kyle Rittenhouse, but I got him on my list. Um, we wanted to talk, uh, we were going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the Georgia, the Georgia race coming up. And we were Okay, also- yeah. So that's a good one to go into. So, yeah, yeah, like one of the big things they think of why like Trump refusing to concede, he still technically hasn't conceded, even right. though he had a weird. His like concession was basically when he told Emily Murphy can sign the thing or something. Yeah. It's really pathetic. Um, yeah, that they were they were refusing to concede and everything because they want to like look strong for the Georgia race, right? And I don't think that's really working in their favor. Um, <sighs> what's his face put out an amazing ad today? It was a uh, Warnock. Yeah, Warnock, Reverend Warnock. Where he uh, tweeted. He posted an ad. Tim walking his dog. Cute dog. Yep. And he's walking through the neighborhood. It's a really nice. And he's talking about how Colonel Lawford is attacking him for his passion, like he's attacking him for his years as a pastor. Right. And like he's like, well, clearly she has nothing to run on. Nothing. She's done nothing. Like I can't explain it yet. But in the end of the year, she basically implies that Kelly Lawford is a bag of dog shit. <laughs> he takes the dog shit and he drops it, it, like the dog poop in the bag and throws it out in the garbage. Yeah. Great ad. Yeah. Um, not as uh, blunt as the way I put it. But <laughs> visual was pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, Kelly Loeffler is a piece of shit. Her, She's uh, husband, the worst. She, her, for, for, for all, her husband runs the stock market. Or he something? owns the Wall Street Exchange. He he owns yeah, so like some these are mechanism. Very rich people. Yeah. Well, and that's what she. They shopped around and, and she bought that Senate seat. You know, he they got her in there and then they donated a bunch of money to the governor and everything. And she was appointed. Yeah, was yeah she was shit. never elected. Kelly Loeffler was happened, never elected. And then she gets appointed. She gets put in like in December. Yep. Of 2019, and within a few months, she's making money off of all this office uh, supplies that. For some reason, will be necessary during a pandemic that we don't know anything about. Yeah, she basically got called into a meeting. They said the pandemic's going to get crazy bad, and then she sold all of her like real estate, office real estate stuff, and instead bought a lot of stock in like Zoom and Lysol. And wow, she, weird, huh? What a weird thing. The day after that, she went on and told everyone in Georgia, hey, go about your normal life. The coronavirus is nothing. It's fake. It's a fraud, blah, blah, blah. And she's making a ton of money and spraying everything in her house with antibacterial spray. Uh, she basically sold out her constituents for money. She she sold them down the river and she profited off of it. She's trash. She's and, just an awful person. She should not be allowed to win her seat. She should be removed immediately. It's yeah. disgusting. Well, she should be in prison. For, for, uh, honestly, yeah. she should. For That was insider trading. I mean, there's not really... A... Isn't Purdue, the other guy, who, yeah. the other fan seat, yep. isn't he also in trouble for insider trading? Was he, he did the one? same exact thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's two right there. They should be removed. And even if you don't like Democrats, but you're a person who doesn't like crime, right? Or crook, maybe you should just get rid of them because these are two awful people. Just because they have the R next to their name, yeah, and they play on your team supposedly, they really don't. No, they don't give a fuck about you. Not you, Joseph. Well, they don't oh, give yeah. a fuck about you. Either. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about me either. Um, yeah, it's really disgusting. It's yeah. it's it's absolutely gross. I hope they lose. They're two horrible people. Um and it would also change the Biden presidency in that immeasurably, yeah. Well, they said like basically with that uh it becomes like what 50-50 uh yep. but then you have the split vote with Kamala so that there is no McConnell is no longer the head of the Senate Majority Leader. Right. And then, in theory, uh, Kamala Harris could, in theory, become the Senate Majority Leader if she wanted to. There's um, nothing, supposedly, and I'm not uh, I'm sure about this, and I, I was listening to, like, um, Progressive Radio, uh, was it on Sirius? Uh, Tom Hartman was talking about it, and even he said, like, we need some, like, people who are understanding, like, politics yeah, yeah. and how it works. But in theory, she could become an acting oh. Senate majority leader. Now, by they said 
did one guy call and said, I don't think Biden would allow that just because he thinks it would be too divisive. Yeah. But in theory, she could. And that would make the Democrats the have majority leadership, make all the Republicans cry. Yes. Uh, and then they would and then they would have able to actually really truly enact their agenda. And the great thing about this election is that it's January 5th. It's yep. getting closer and closer every day. And it's before the inauguration. So yeah. if they got this going in and they win those seats, even if they win one, I think if they win one, it's a big fucking deal. Well, I want them to win both, but if they just come out with at least one, I know it'll suck because that means you still have um, McConnell. McConnell, but it would also send a message, a major message like, well, and also, uh, and I don't think this is likely, and I, I don't, I'm not in favor, but like you could, if the, if the Democrats have 49 votes and the Republicans have 50, you, you wonder like, could you approach like a Lisa Murkowski, who is an independent technically, and say like, hey, if you caucus with the Democrats, we'll give you this committee, you can run this committee. Or, you know what I mean? Like Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, there's a few of them that are kind of on the outside of the Republican Party. You know what I mean? Like they're not welcome in it right now. Trump's always giving them headaches and this, that, and whatever. The Democrats might be able to get one of them to switch over. It's not like or crazy. Or become a, where they, they change to an independent. Yeah. And you call two right, there's two independents right now. One of them's Bernie Sanders and Angus and King. Yeah, yeah, and they, they basically caucus with the Democrats. Yeah. yeah, like if they, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think that's, um, uh, I don't either, but like, I don't think it's crazy. I can see almost like the Republicans trying to sink their teeth into Joe Manchin. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think that's, um, I think that is just as likely to happen, but like. I don't know. I, I guess all that's kind of speculative. First things first is you get you got to try to take Georgia. I I think the re, I think the Republicans are in a much better situation. But shit, I mean Biden won Georgia, so there's clearly a a majority of people in Georgia who vote that are willing and to. There's more people that will younger people that will be able to vote that couldn't yep. vote in the election because that's three months, almost three months later. Yep, you have a lot of eighteen year olds now. And I heard though that it's really fucked up, supposedly in Georgia, that people have to like re-register to vote or something like that. Like they're mm. not automatically able to vote for this. I don't know. I, well, I mean, if that's the case, that should hurt both parties equally, you know. True. And honestly, I I like the as far as I understand, Stacey Abrams built a machine down there, and that's that's what the Democrats are are often missing. That's what they're missing in Florida. I that's wonder if she'll run for governor again and go after Kemp again. I don't know. I, I mean, you will like. I mean, I I I don't live there, so I don't know right. to say, but it would be kind of cool to see her take you know, out Kemp. Like, yeah, because Kemp's a piece of crap. He is. Well, I don't know. I I think, and I read today that the Democrats are actually going to knock on doors for this election, and they made the decision not to during the presidential run because of the coronavirus. But they said with this one, well, I think they understand how this one is. And yeah, well, they're going to mask up. They're going to they have a this, is, this will change everything. Yeah. Like, and I know that sounds like I say that about everything. Like, I just won't change everything. But right. literally, this will change. This will be a massive, massive difference in what Biden can accomplish, especially yeah. in his first two years. Then. Oh, absolutely. It but will like, change like we could put in. You can what's his face can resign immediately in the Supreme court, that old man. Yep. Uh, and then they could put in somebody young, like some 35 year old in there uh, in his place. Yep. Yeah. It'll still be a six, three court, but at least you won't have to worry for the next 20, at least the next 20 years of like one of those. I mean, obviously anybody can die at any moment. That's just how life is unfortunately, but you don't have to sit there worrying about like an 87 year old with cancer. No, with the, like, with the, re the, the Supreme court being six, three with the fucking Gorsuch Kavanaugh and Barrett on it. I would almost say, get the, get the youngest person possible and get like an actual circus clown and just make it like a farce, you know, like, you know what, here's, we're putting a circus clown I, 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 on the yeah, Supreme I, Court. I, I know you're joking. 
I don't agree with that, but I do agree. I, know, I'm just... I agree in like they get the youngest person in the legal age. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean like legal like that. I mean like legal. Right. <laughs> is there is there an age, is it thirty <laughs> like I, for president you got to be thirty five? I'm assuming you got to be like. I don't know. I don't know if there is a certain. You might. You definitely have to have some certain degrees. You have to have like something. I don't. Probably I mean, not. I don't know. I think you, I don't the know. Constitution yeah. was written by like illiterate farmers. I mean, there's like. Yeah. There's, How old do you? I bet you that maybe it is like 35 because I remember people were saying that about like all the horrible judges that uh, they were yeah. putting through in the federal benches that were like 35 years old. Yeah, that makes oh. sense. How old do you have to be in the Supreme Court? Let's see. How old do you have to be in the Supreme Court? Frequently asked question. Survey says. No, that didn't answer my fucking question. I said, how <laughs> old do you have to be? Oh, okay. I don't care. <laughs> Unless you want to look it up. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Supreme Court. Uh, how can Judge B Supreme Court huh that is a good question I'll bet you there's no age limit Supreme Kid Judge <laughs> Doogie Doogie Judge Doogie how is there the judge Not right Doogie. Judge Doogie yeah the constitution does not specify qualifications for justices such as age um is there a minimum age for Supreme Court? Uh, no. You don't even got to be a lawyer. No. I mean, he, yeah, I he thought could. people were making jokes and said it was up to Trump. He would have put his daughter in the Supreme Court. Yeah, probably, you know. Well, anyway. Judge Jared and Ivanka, they're one judge. I Ivanka. would say you, you get. Judge Ivanka. You, you pour money. Now, the advantages that Democrats have in Georgia are Stacey Abrams built a machine that, that's reliable um, to. The uh, Biden has already said he's going down there to do some rallies. And I, I'll bet you, I don't know this for a fact, but I'll bet you you get like Obama going down there for a rally. There's probably some local, you know, celebrities that are from Georgia. Obama will definitely be down yeah. there. So you're going to have that and you you grind it out. You know, you only have one race. A lot of money is going to be going into it. The Democrats shouldn't be missing anything. They shouldn't be missing do you think Trump will go down there, or do you think at this point he's, he's considered a uh, like? I would think that they would not want him there. Don't like, if he yeah. just lost the presidency. He'll go down there all pissed off, and he'll be like, "You guys, uh, yeah." He'll just talk about himself. He won't yeah. even talk and about he lost, or Purdue. He lost Georgia. He's not yeah. going to go down. He, he's going to go down to Georgia and just bitch at him. You know, like he would end up screwing them over. He'd be like, "If I don't win, you don't win either." Yeah. Well, that's why, and we talked about this slightly before. I know you buried the bodies <laughs> before we uh we went on air. Is that there's like it's hard to tell if it's a joke or if it, but but a write in write in Trump campaign. So like instead of voting for Loeffler or Purdue, you oh can yeah, I was going to ask Trump. you about this. Yeah, people, there's. Wait, who well, who started this? Obviously, it's a, it has to be a joke. I don't know. Look, there there are legitimate MAGA chubs out there that, like you said, they, they're not Republicans per se. They're Trump Trump people. You know, well, there is a portion of people that voted for Trump that probably never voted for a Republican in their life. There just is. Right. You could say that about almost any president. That it's going to be some president where they could say. Well, I, I never voted for a president, so I voted for this person. I think it, that it, happened with Obama. I think Obama brought a lot of excitement out and people that didn't normally there were vote. were people who didn't vote in the primaries until they were able to vote for Bernie. That right. I, I've heard, yeah. I, you hear it all the time. It's always a new voter. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But there, I'm sure, and that's why I tweeted that today about the thing about Republicans being desperate on a national level. And that's why yep. Trump was able to crush those 16 to 20 clowns in the primary <laughs> because... He did. He was not a Republican to a lot of people. Yeah, he was Trump. He was a personality on TV. He was funny, you know, like in a, in a sense, not like funny, like uh, like a clown, a buffoon, right. buffoon funny, uh, <laughs> like, like the scene from Goodfellas. Yeah, he. Yeah, well, I don't know. I I I am like look. The, the, yeah, go ahead. What? No, if the if the Democrats had to fight for a state, 
that was not traditionally a red or a blue state. If, if they had to fight in a battleground, I like their odds in Georgia as much as I like them anywhere else. You know, obviously, well, I mean, it's, it's good that uh, Biden won. Yep. Um, I think maybe some people who said things like, I'm going to vote for uh, Biden, but I'm going to vote for the Republicans, so keep them in check or something. But then it's like, if you're that person and they're reading that like, McConnell's going to make it to the point where nothing will get done, you might, there might be a few people, a few. Yeah. Just a few. They might change their position and be like, no, I got to vote for the Democrats this time because nothing, this, this, I hate McConnell. Like, that's it, a small it, voting, it, it's almost like a, you're almost in a way voting out McConnell too. Like, yeah. Not like, I mean, he, he's still there. He'll always be there. He'll go on TV and complain about the deficit all of a sudden. All of a sudden, the deficit will become very important again. To the, yeah. You already started hearing that before the election. It was really funny. I was like, here we go. Marco Sorry, Rubio is complaining about the right. deficit again. Um, but it, in a way, it does remove him from a lot of power. More power than he's ever had. Oh, yeah. He won't have that power anymore. Well. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I, I like that. And you're right. It, McConnell's on the ballot. Trump's on the ballot. George has already proven they'll they'll more people will vote for a Democrat Biden than they will for a Republican Trump. Well, Trump is not on the ballot anymore, but he is still right. he is still another fuck you to Trump. Yeah. Um. And and it's more of a bigger fuck you to McConnell. I think. Um. Yeah, the whole idea that like they would vote for Trump twice so he could be two senators. That's hilarious. I I'm confident some people will write in Trump. I, I hope I, they do. I hope yeah. they write him. I hope they vote write him in twice. Yeah, that'd not be the Democratic. I'm talking about the people who would vote Republican. Like, yeah, I hope they write in Trump. They'll probably not even like specify which Trump. You know, and they'll, they'll have to have like, some right. But, MAGA. Yeah, but I'll like if, too, right MAGA. If Trump wins both write-in races, they'll probably be like, "Oh, the other Trump was Ivanka." You know, or like, yeah, <laughs> they'll try to slip. No. <laughs> You didn't specify anybody right. like a Trump sign. A literal Trump sign is the is the center of Georgia. Yeah. Like, so a Trump sign from a building like is now <laughs> like he's still, like for some reason though it still has that dumbass tie <laughs> and it's like that dumb voice and everything. Yeah. Well, you know, now I'm a senator. You know they all said you're just a sign. You just a, you just you just a bunch of words, a piece of metal put on a building. Corrugated metal, yeah. Wait, you know, <laughs> wow. people have spoken. Well, that's that's Georgia, and I guess uh, our last item, uh, or the one that we've, we're kind of tacking on here, is the Kyle Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, I is... want to talk about Thanksgiving for. I guess we could talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. I could leave Thanksgiving. Okay, yeah, okay. So Kyle, and not, I'm not talking about like the story of. Okay. We're gonna reenact the the Charlie the Brown Pilgrim. Thanksgiving special. The thanks there were Pepper and Patty. Yeah, and I'll tell you uh, that. That's Charlie a, Brown make a feast. Yeah, that the Thanksgiving episode is a deep cut. Most people aren't super. They they know the Christmas one and the pumpkin one, but uh, my, the deep cuts I prefer are the Thanksgiving and the spelling bee ones. Both I think the real if you want to be real deep cut, yeah, Arbor Day. Arbor Day. I don't know if they made a cartoon of it, but I know they made a book. Yeah, I think they actually did make a cartoon. It's Arbor Day, Charlie Brown. Oh, that's where that's the great. baseball field, his mound, his pitcher mound has a tree. In a it. tree on it. <laughs> yeah, and it was a very powerful. That's a that's a real like that's for the people who really give a shit about peanuts. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Thanksgiving's like a B level. Yeah, Halloween and Christmas are definitely great pumpkin. And all that. Mm-hmm. That's like that's mass audience. Yeah, yeah mid mid level fans Thanksgiving. <laughs> Arbor Day, die hard, die hard, fanatics. P- yeah. Charles M. Schultz, fanatics. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse uh, is not in jail anymore. No. Well, no. last week we talked about his lovely mother went on Tucker Carlson. Yep. Yeah. Um, pleading for a beautiful, lovable son. Right. Completely unapologetic for his murders. Yeah. Uh, Parker Carlson didn't ask her any of those questions. No. It was completely partisan and made it sound like that we are in, actually in a war and that Kyle Rittenhouse is a soldier. Of yeah, war, it was really prisoner bizarre. of war right now. He he fought the the army of Antifa. Yep. Um again, I'm kind of kidding, but this is how they think. And, uh, you know, he should be given a medal of freedom. He shouldn't be in jail. He's just, you know, 
He was going to be a cop. <laughs> oh my God, Matt. Jeez. Well, well, sir, if you just waited one year and became a cop, you could have shot those people. You would have been, you know, you'd have gotten <laughs> paid for it. Yeah. Let's well, give the guy a day's pay. He was bailed out by. Uh, so bizarre. Yeah, he, he was bailed out by a bunch of people, but the two main contributors are the two people that put him over the top. Uh, one of them was Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> and I was surprised. I mean, Rick, look, Ricky Schroeder did go on to have like a pretty good run. He was on that NYPD Blue show. Yeah, like, I mean, he was a kid actor from Silver Spoons. Yep. And he's one of these people whose name like floated around. He was on different shows. But yeah, his biggest... Probably one of the biggest gets he got was, uh, well, what's his face was on there, and then he left it for one season. Yeah, uh, David, David Caruso. Caruso. Yep. He pulled a Caruso. Yep, is what they called it. Uh, and then I think they replaced him with uh, crap. He plays Bail Organa in uh, the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, um, Jimmy Smiths. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith was he, on he for was a while. Good. Yep. And then Ricky Schroeder came on for years. Yeah. But after that, I mean, what was the last thing you saw that guy in? I right. He, that was his... he had like a, a legal action against him for he, Well, he beat his something. wife like a, a, a couple of years ago. He, he was arrested for spousal abuse. And yep. I look, Ricky Schroeder turning out to be a MAGA chud. Sure, that tracks. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Well, he always him. was a Republican. I remember him, like, they did like some special on like, these Hollywood people are Republican. And like he spoke at the 2000 RNC convention for George W. Bush. Jeez, all right. Um, then, you know, back then, uh, especially if you didn't pay attention to politics that much, that was just another one of the yeah. political parties. And it was always known that like over at least in the modern day, the Democrats usually got close of the celebrities. That's just yeah. how it works. Um, and uh, Ricky Schroeder was one of the Republicans. Now, I would say 20 years ago, RNC versus 20 years later, where we are now with Trump and everything. It's a different kind of RNC and to have your name attached to it as a celebrity, put your brand name attaching it to the modern day GOP. Yeah. That's a, that's a different, that's a career choice that maybe you didn't choose. I don't know. I think that's a, yeah. So it was, it was uh, Ricky Schroeder. And the my pillow guy were the two yeah, big contributors. My pillow, that guy. Huh. Like, whoa, so weird, so weird. Uh, yeah. So, oh, here it is. Ricky Schroeder tweeted, "Morning from Kyle and his mom, Wendy, in America. We are all innocent until a jury appears, decide decides guilt or innocent. Not the mob or the press. Not people's eyes or right. the dead <laughs> body that were left behind. Not videotaped footage and confessions. Of boy <laughs> killing people. Uh, when the facts are known, uh, they are known, yeah. many of you will owe this young man an apology. Move to parlor, everyone. Leave Twitter. Jack Dorsey sucks. Uh, and here's a picture of three pigs smiling. It's Ricky Schroeder. Well, Kyle Rittenhouse and Kyle Rittenhouse's mom. They're all fucking pigs. Oh, They're disgusting human beings. They're all smiling. This kid looks like he won a trip to Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, this guy tweeted, uh, I don't, I liked it. I don't know uh, what, what he said. Something like, you know, if I killed some people, even if it was proven to be self-defense, I wouldn't be smiling like I was going to Disneyland. Like, yeah. This kid's disgusting. Like it really unapologetic is. murderer. That that is the grossest part. Is that this kid who's probably been brainwashed by his shitty mom, yep, and his shitty family, with his militia bullshit and everything, thinking that like he they think he is a fucking soldier well, who fought in a, the war against Antifa. They really believe this shit. Yeah, the mom. I mean. I don't even know where to begin with all that kind of stuff. We talked about this a little bit last week. I I, I am sympathetic to parents who have kids that are all fucked up and shit because it's hard to be a parent and get, but like this mom is getting off on her kid being a fucking killer. You know, she, this is exactly. I'm sure she's pocketed money from it yeah. too. Right. So. Well, I, I, I left a comment on Ricky Schroeder's thing. I said, this is beyond gross, Ricky. <laughs> The kid is an unapologetic murderer. 
I mean, it's disgusting. And but the funny thing about this, here's the best part. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I'll get into the other one in a second. Um, Ricky Schroeder, the deal with the money given to bail out Ricky, Sh- uh, to bail out Ricky Schroeder, the money to bail out Kyle Rittenhouse was that Ricky Schroeder has the exclusive rights to make a documentary about him. Mm. So there was a price to be there. And so Kyle Rittenhouse's mom signed away her son's life to Ricky Schroeder. Yeah. Ricky Schroeder owns him. Uh, well, geez, I don't know what yeah. that means, but, you know. Yeah, it's disgusting. Like, there's people celebrating. There's a huge portion of the country yeah, celebrating yeah. this. And I made a comment, and I said, the same people that are happy about this are the same people that defended Nicholas Sandman. And someone went left oh, yeah. comment saying, like, oh, one guy's a murderer, the other guy was, a, like, a douchebag. Like, no, you don't understand. It was the same people, though. Same people, same yeah. Same people that were, like defending this stupid smirking kid and then are now defending a murderer yeah because it's That's a huge flex right there yeah it's uh, it, but it's you're right it is the same I mean, it's, it's the same absolutely people disgusting. imagine if like fucking some guy uh who's in blm kills a couple of people gets arrested well one not shot on the spot and murdered right away <laughs> yeah that definitely would happen but gets arrested, and then like I don't know, some actor or someone comes out and bails him out, and then they announce it. People would be like, the right wing would first of all would lose their goddamn fucking. Oh mind. yeah, they'd yeah. be like nonstop. That's all they were talking about. And they would link Joe Biden to the BLM. Like, when will Joe Biden say sure. like like the, the two of the same people? <laughs> Joe Biden was the one who killed those people. It wasn't that BLM's act guy. <laughs> That's how crazy they would be. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, fuck, it was like something I was gonna say about this. Uh, yeah, but this little fucker gets to like stay home Thanksgiving when his family is probably celebrated. I mean, he's still gonna face trial. He's right? still gonna go to trial. You know, I don't think this kid's out of the woods by any stretch. And he, he, look, he's he's fucked. I mean, like. I hope so. I hope there's no sympathy given to him. Oh, well, that was it. Black Rifle Coffee or something. Oh, Endor- like he has an endorsement deal with some right wing coffee company. Well, it's it's entirely possible too that once Biden takes over, that the Justice Department investigates him for like civil rights offenses and stuff. I mean, this this kid I think is fucked, and and rightfully so. I mean, he he should the the real thing is like his mom should also be fucked, and his mom should be on trial for something. But um, yeah, she is, drove him there. She drove him there to murder people. It's it is crazy, you know. I mean, like here we are. It's twenty twenty, and we got like fucking Ricky Schroeder busting out MAGA Chud murderers. But that's just something that's happening. Bingo card. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. So I guess before we wrap this up, yeah. uh, You know, I was saying like Kyle Rittenhouse gets to stay home. Yep. And have Thanksgiving. I don't yes. know. Maybe he'll get COVID. <laughs> you know? You could, yeah. Yeah. Maybe all of them will get COVID. I have no idea. I mean, these people don't wear masks. They've been doing nope. it for nine months. I don't understand it. I don't get like why it it affects certain people, why it doesn't. I'm not saying I want these people to get it. I'm just saying like you see people who don't ign- like to this day they go they sneak into stores they yeah. put a mask down they don't and it's it, it's like it's maddening and then you on top of it now you see like the right wing like pushing the warm thanksgiving right uh, ted cruz tweeted a turkey yeah. uh, like uh take this from my cold dead hands or something it was a picture yeah of a turkey. it was like and, a yeah, it was like the gadsden flag but a turkey yeah <laughs> and i reach I retweeted and I said, Ted Cruz wants to fuck that turkey. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, I could totally see him. I could see it. Uh, not that I want to, but it's just, it's like something I could think would yeah. be a reality. Uh, what are you doing there, honey? <laughs> Making giblets. <laughs> I don't know, Ted Cruz voice. Like, oh, it's disgusting. I'm going to throw up. It is. Uh, I- but like, you know, they're saying that, like, there's going to be such a oh, massive yeah. 
it's gonna blow up. We're, they're gonna end up having to shut down the country. That's crazy. I I went. Yeah, I. I Trump, the numbers. No, the numbers have just spiked incalculably over the last week or two. You know, and it's only gonna get worse. And there are a ton of people that are like they're going to have their Thanksgiving dinner. They're going to fly in 20 of their greatest relatives and whatever. That's insane. I saw this thing on TikTok. It was hilarious. There's a bunch of kids doing it, but it was like one kid has some cheesy music in the background. This one kid, it was Thanksgiving. One kid's like, my name's Aunt Sally and I'm bringing scalloped potatoes. And they'd go to another guy and say, I'm Bob, Uncle Bob, and I'm bringing my famous rum cake. And then it'd be like, I'm, I'm Cousin Todd and I'm bringing coronavirus and then there's like these sad trauma well, the is, they said it's like okay so you get a COVID test done yep you get a negative and then you fly out five days later yep and then he found out like it actually you should wait like seven to ten days yeah. to see if you have it because it doesn't show up right away and then on top of it if you're flying well one just because you had a test once doesn't mean well, I mean, a test doesn't mean, oh, I'm in mirror. Like, yeah, no, that that moment in time that they got your snot, yeah. they're able to test your spit and saliva, or whatever it is they do in there, the brain juice, because I got one done and I swore they went right through the back of my head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember. I can't say the letter. Well, I see, I can't say it. <laughs> Not my brain. I, I can't even tell you what it is because I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well and most of these people are going to get tests anyway they're just going to go you know i mean like they're not going to get tests the ones that, don't, get, the ones that yeah. don't really give a fuck i mean the ones that voted for trump don't give a shit and they're all like i'm gonna have a big thanksgiving with my family in america you can't do anything to stop it and i'm like well, okay fuck that turkey is <laughs> my god giving right to fuck a turkey on oh, that fucking dinner fucking this is god giving right those pilgrims didn't fuck those people that fuck that turkey <laughs> I don't think that's how it went down. The first yeah, time. probably not. But the, it will be. It will be. Um, it, it'll be tough. I, I don't remember if we talked about this on the podcast or not. But like my, uh, we were gonna have my wife's family out. Not or, on the uh, podcast. Yeah. Well, offline. Offline. Uh, no, no, they were gonna drive out. Uh, yeah, we talked about it offline. They were going to drive out and we had had it planned like literally the year before, you know, like, hey, next year, let's do this. It was pre-COVID. That was the plan. And we called it off and it sucked and it was depressing. But like, what what are you going to do? You know, I mean, you can't, you, you got to, you got to just do the right thing and like tough through it. You know, you can fuck that turkey next year. Right. I mean, there's... <laughs> Fuck that turkey. Yeah, fuck that turkey. No, seriously, though, it's like, you know, I could, we're going to have our, my in-laws, but it's just them. And yeah. they live in like an apartment. And they don't go anywhere. I don't know. I still like, of course, I'm in, I'm like paranoid as fuck. I'm like, right. Um, but I think if you had like, look, if I, I think it's different. If you, they, they said like, fewer than 10 people and greater than 10 people are like apples and oranges. If you have more than 10 people over, you're essentially, you know, really, really at risk. And if you have fewer than 10 people, you're less at risk. I'd say we play it by ear. I mean, you and I have talked about this offline too. I mean, like there are instances where you make calculated risks and decisions. I mean, if you have like in-laws that are primarily solitary and living alone and, and don't get out much anyway, then you're probably not at any great risk having them over if you take general precautions and they take general precautions. But man, for the most part, it's just going to get real ugly after Thanksgiving. I guess that's what it's going to get ugly after Thanksgiving because then you also get into Christmas and it's going to get ugly and you could get it's going to get ugly. And again, I just don't understand. Like the, you know, I drive by like restaurants are packed. Like we drove by like on the 35 or something. And they passed by the Olive Garden, the Olive Garden parking lot was packed. Oh. I'm like, I don't get it. I'm sorry. It's like the, I still don't understand how people during a fucking pandemic cannot survive with like, I mean, takeout's fine, but I don't understand like, yeah. It is amazing how little this country is the ability to actually sacrifice anything. Like truly sacrifice yeah. anything. It blows my mind. And how it's become this like culture war thing pushed by the right wing to go out and just 
live your life and everything while Kelly Loeffler collects money right. knowing that we are in a fucking pandemic and that okay. like this bitch will and Purdue that piece of shit they'll yeah. they'll tell their constituents no go live your life go do your thing but while you do that I'm going to collect on zoom and all these things because companies are not gonna be able to have their employees but hey you go live your life or trump telling people it doesn't exist and all that but then a video comes out months later yeah, of him knowing yeah. back in early february that this was possibly the most deadliest disease he says it trump goes it's really bad yeah it goes it's in like blue, it's, yeah. it, like it's not even your hands it's your lungs and everything he's like mm is absolutely horrible he says this on tape yeah. and then he tells people within weeks later no big deal right you'll be fine and, and again it's like it's november this country is a disaster this is what's going to happen unfortunately this is my prediction one it's going to get really fucking bad because people mm-hmm. don't care uh nothing no shutdowns will happen at least there'll be shutdowns in some parts of the country but none of the red states or anything they won't shut down shit and it will take the uh, uh biden to win and he'll be the one who has to make the decision and say, we have to shut down the country. Yeah. And the Republicans will blame Biden for everything, when in yep. reality is they set Biden set up in motion, right. for him to fail. Well, give a fuck. We'll see. What? I think I think he'll leave it to the governors. I think a lot of these Republican governors, even the ones that are super anti-mask, once their state starts going to hell, they all change their tune. That woman in Iowa, or I think it was Iowa, uh, just put in mask restrictions and what that lockdowns. crazy lady in South Dakota. She's a psychopath. Yeah, I saw that. that. She, she's she's like her, right? on there talking about how like we need to understand. What the fuck I need to understand that position for? You know what do I need to understand? You don't like science. I don't need to understand that. You well, someone made a joke and said, uh, "I'm supposed to fucking." So I'm supposed to listen to a person who said who doesn't believe, believes the world 6,000 years old and doesn't believe in anything, but they need to know more data about yeah. coronavirus. Like, like people who think the world hasn't aged in 6,000 years, they probably thinks the world's flat. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, thinks a guy is going to come back any day and walk on water, but I need more data. The right. science isn't clear. I mean, like, sure. that is just fucking ridiculous. Uh, like uh, those Right away, you sh- those people should be discounted and removed from the conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's unfortunately that's where we are now. In the and we're at this in a second. I think that's where we are right now in the in this place and time right now because the media has always played both sides. Oh yeah, both sides of some and yep. have elevated. Like it's one thing again to have like it's one thing to have like right wing like politics and all that. That's one thing. But when you start elevating people that now we're talking about like flat earth or mm-hmm. pushing conspiracies that are completely unfounded. Um, yeah. That's the problem right there. The media should be like, no, we don't. Yeah. We only the, talk to like actual experts. We're not right. going to talk actual to things people. that are plausible. Well. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> You know, stay safe. Uh, if you guys are listening to this before Thanksgiving. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, it's better to skip a year of not having to eat Thanksgiving with your racist uncle. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and, and, if, and if you have a, a horrible family member, this is the perfect year to get out of Thanksgiving. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can do it next year, hopefully, when maybe we have like vaccines and yeah. I don't know, therapies that actually work and the virus isn't as yes. isn't the end of the world as it is right now. Yeah. Um, we'll have okay. more Thanksgivings. It's an okay to take off a year. It's okay. Of course. Not a big deal. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, shit happens and it sucks, but you know, in the end of the day, Thanksgiving is just a, another, another wonderful genocidal holiday that we celebrate. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's kind of. It's kind of. Isn't it kind of ironic though that the people that most of the people that complain about Thanksgiving are white people who want to get spread diseases. Yeah, that is. There's it's a certain like irony the story there. Of Thanksgiving, like <laughs> the very first over, Thanksgiving. What? The very first Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. like they basically brought all the diseases from Europe to the Native Americans. Yeah, and then um, like wiped them out. Yeah, like. 
it's kind of ironic, right? How that works out, like uh, how they're doing it again this year. It is. It's like rain on your wedding day or a fly in your Chardonnay. Well, it's kind of like, you or, know, it makes sense. Like if you want to like really re really relive the first Thanksgiving, COVID 2020 is definitely the perfect year to relive the first It is. Yeah. You it really are going to be spreading diseases to people. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like it's kind of funny. I mean, it's fucked, yeah, super yeah. fucked up. Well, there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, you don't eat turkey because you're nah. uh, you're uh, a, a vegetarian. You're one of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was gonna say stuff, but it's I'll, I'll say it for all. Time. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, what are you gonna eat? Well, I I usually the last few years I've made like a risotto with like a butternut squash and mm-hmm. sage. And it's pretty good. It's kind of got like a savory stuffing like flavor to it. Sounds good. I'm already salivating. It's it's real good. And so then, um, going from, so it's... <laughs> we, we make sides and stuff like that. Um, you don't have turkey? Nah. Had, you know, had your wife doesn't care about turkey? Nah, she's not a huge. She'll she'll eat meat, but she's not a huge meat eater. And my kid doesn't eat meat. Um, so if her family had come out, we were going to get like a turkey breast, like at a. Yeah you know, like a pre-made one or something we'd just pop in the oven. Um, so yeah, I think last, last year we made a pizza, a homemade pizza. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I thought you were joking. No, right? like we it's <laughs> literally Elios, like, made <laughs> yeah, right. In the toaster. Finest, finest <laughs> well, Tostinos. We we just like cook random shit, but we do have like my wife makes a good cranberry sauce with like whole cranberries Ooh. and uh nothing she'll... beats the canned jelly shit. <laughs> Just that <laughs> noise it makes too. Yeah, <laughs> the glop. The glop is like you only know, hear, you know, I don't really open it more than once a year. So it's like a you know, yeah. Well now, you're, gonna, you're gonna make a turkey because I saw you posted a turkey I'm not recipe. It. No. Oh, who's Who's gonna make it? Oh, I made. I, okay, hold on. Finish what you're saying. Who, yeah, tell you. you tweeted to like a re. Uh, was it Dan Rather or something? No, or? it was uh, Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes. Yeah. I, I said he said something about like he doesn't uh, cook or something, and he has to make a turkey. It, and I told him, listen, because I've done this before. Yeah, yeah. Get a turkey breast. Wait. Uh, like five, no more than six to seven pounds, depending on how big your slow cooker is. Right. Um. And what you do is you peel the skin off the turkey breast. Right. Uh, salt, pepper, garlic, cumin? No, uh, whatever that red shit is, that pe- uh, paprika. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Uh, olive oil. You rub it on the turkey. Yep. Turkey breast. And then you use like a cup of chicken stock in mm-hmm. it. And you just let it sit in the slow cooker for like six to seven hours. And it's delicious. Yeah. It's just like, it's super easy to do. I left it on there. You can't fucking thank me. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I saw, I, it was like a real long, well thought out tweet. And I kept waiting for the punchline. Like at the end, you'd be like, yeah, you fuck the turkey. Fuck the turkey. Ted Cruz style. Just like Ted Cruz fucks his turkey. But there was no punchline. It was just like, oh, that's like a nice no, that's recipe. A literal, that's like, true. do this. Here you go. Like, it's not that difficult, guys. It's, it's <laughs> like a real easy recipe that yeah. I found. And, We've done it a bunch of times. We did it definitely That's in funny. the beginning of the uh, COVID. Uh, um, no, I get a fried turkey every year from uh, That's right, yeah. this place, the Bayou Market or something. And it's, nice. it's just so good. I mean, it's probably possibly the worst thing to eat, but um, I'm, not gonna try, I'm not going to attempt to do a fried turkey because I like my house. And right, like That's dangerous. House. You know, oh, wait, you ever see those videos of it just shooting? Well, the no. problem is the... The number one, I was always wondering, I'm like, well, what the fuck is that? Because the morons don't thaw their turkey. Right. And then the the water, the ice particles kind of. Uh, With the uh, oil, because you're basically putting it into a drum of oil. Like, yeah. so it's a shit ton of oil. So they said the turkeys will like shoot out like a rocket and just yeah. explode. It's, <laughs> it's like your the side of your house is covered with fucking turkey napalm. You know, like, it's just like. If you're not dead. Right. Explosion. Like. You just gotta make sure that shit is like hundred percent thaw. Right. Or and you go down I to the bayou fine. market. Or you could have... I, I, I hopefully at the bayou market, they make like tons of them. So I right. would imagine that they got it that down to a science. Got the great like the weather this year and like because of COVID or something, like they're they had to hire cousin <laughs> Enid or something. Like 
not the greatest. Right. All gone made of that. All gone made of bro, turkey, and the whole building blew up. Yeah. But I, got, I still got my tooth. Well. Old Enid got his tooth. I'm sure your turkey will be a good one. <laughs> Hopefully Enid doesn't fuck it before right. I, I get it. You know, that's or Ted Cruz. What did you base this with? <laughs> <laughs> Ted Cruz secret sauce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I say. You know, uh, this year's Thanksgiving, leave a seat open for Ted Cruz to come in your house. Yeah. Just like a plate for Elijah, you got to leave a seat for Ted. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're just like, what's going on with our turkey? Right. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? On that note, I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about that? Thank you for listening to You Still Going On About That. Uh, please like, comment, share. And if you haven't done already, please follow us on Instagram, YSGOAT, Facebook, YSGOAT, and Twitter, YSGOAT. Thank you. And have a great day.